but um, I'd like to just first say I'm Tammy Gaskell. I'm the director of the Road Jam Library and welcome you on behalf of the Columbia County Libraries Association, which is sponsoring these programs in collaboration with the Martin Van Buren National Historic Site. And welcome Mike Wasco, who is our presenter today. He's a um, park ranger at the historic site and will be talking to us about wallpaper. And I notice he's got some interesting wallpaper right behind him. Um, if you have questions during this, um, I will be monitoring the chat and the Q&A. So feel free to put your questions in there and we'll get those to Mike so that he can answer them. And I am going to turn it over to Mike and let this get started. Welcome. Hello, uh, so my, my name is Mike Washko. Um, I'm, I'm the museum specialist at the park, which is like the collections manager, essentially. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here and to, to be a speaker in this library series. Um, I'd like to thank Annette Rousseau, who is our interpretation and education program manager for giving me the chance to be a presenter in this series. Um, as you can see, I mean, I, I love wallpaper. I mean, I, I got a lovely floral print behind me here in my kitchen. Um, and I love using, I, I love being able to work with our collection and it could give you a behind the scenes look about stuff people would not normally see. Um, it's not always easy to know what you would, what you would find or what would belong in a house museum. Um, sometimes furnishings are a mix of family owned items, period pieces, or sometimes reproductions. But what's great about the wallpaper is that's one area we know is accurate because we literally took it off of the walls of Lindenwald. We're very fortunate to have examples of wallpaper from the house throughout multiple owners of the, you know, throughout multiple owners of the property. Um, of course, the focus is going to be on how the house looked when Martin Van Buren lived there, but you will see images of later period wallpaper as well. Um, I want to start with a brief introduction about Martin Van Buren, just in case some of you may be a little bit unfamiliar. Uh, he was born December 5th, 1782 in Kinderhook. Um, he was... He was the first president who was actually born a US citizen, as well as the only president whose second language is actually English. He, he grew up a native Dutch speaker. He had a, a long political career and held multiple offices. Uh, throughout his life, he was a state senator, New York attorney general, United States senator, governor of New York, he was Secretary of State under Andrew Jackson, as well as Andrew Jackson's second vice president. And then finally, he was elected president in 1836. Um, he lost his reelection campaign in 1840. Um, his other big claim to fame is he is the founder of the Democratic Party. As for Lindenwald itself, the house was built in 1797 by Judge Peter Van Ness. Martin Van Buren purchased the house in 1839 and he renovated the property in 1849 and 1850. The renovation was done by noted architect Richard Upjohn and it went from being a federal style house to an Italianate Gothic Victorian property. Uh, by the time Martin Van Buren moved into Lindenwald in the spring of 1841, Wallpaper had already been around for hundreds of years. It was first invented in China and it found its way to Europe in the 12th century. Wallpaper originally started as an imitation of European tapestries. Local artisans would use wooden blocks to apply those images to paper. Prior to, prior to the Revolutionary War, the majority of, of wallpaper used in America came from Great Britain.
Sorry about that. Um, forgot, to, forgot to share my screen. Sorry about that. Um, so by 1785, wallpaper was becoming machine produced. And around that time period, France became known as the, as the leaning creator of wallpaper. They were known for their superior quality and designs. They did have competition from Chinese manufacturers who capitalized on, on Western Europe's love for Eastern culture. Chinese wallpaper was all custom made, but cost more than wallpaper you could get from France. This helped France become the number one, sorry, the, the number one industry leader in wallpaper up until the Civil War. Um, in Great Britain, with the help of the Industrial Revolution and improved technologies in wallpaper, they overtook France by the end of the Civil War. As for wallpaper production in America, it was not as prominent as that made in England or France, but we got our start between 1780 and 1810. Initially, wallpaper was primarily for the wealthy, it was very labor intensive and time consuming to make because you would have to work on in individual sheets of paper and then hand stitch it or glue it together. Uh, as for Martin Van Buren, he applied wallpaper pretty much throughout every single room in his house. The wallpaper was primarily from New York City with the exception of his main hall, which featured a panoramic landscape produced by, by the Zubair company. Van Buren wanted to have nice wallpaper throughout the house, but he wanted it to be not too expensive. He was, he was pretty sensible with his money and did not want to do anything too over the top with the one big assumption of what was found in the main hall. Now in a perfect world, his wallpaper never would have changed at all, but that is not how those things work. Uh, subsequent owners removed Van Buren's wallpaper and put up wallpaper of their own between 1864 when the house was sold and 1974 when the National Park Service reacquired the house. Um, as a museum person, I wish all the wallpaper remained unchanged, but I understand where the homeowners were coming from. As a homeowner myself, the first thing I did when I bought my house was remove a bunch of 1980s wallpaper throughout various rooms. Um, I hated it. Um, I felt no connection to it. And it didn't matter that the previous owners of the house thought it was great, but it was my house. So, you know, I wanted to make those changes, which is the same thing that anyone else thought in regards to London Wall. So the Park Service had, a re had, had to rediscover Marna Van Buren's original wallpaper. Wallpaper was found behind mirrors, furniture, and around door casings while work was being done to restore the house in the late 70s throughout the mid 1980s. The green room and the formal parlor were, were two rooms that had large pier mirrors that fortunately had wallpaper original to Van Buren behind them. There were also historic fireboards in the house that contained bits of Van Buren's wallpaper as well. In some cases, later period wallpaper had to be removed first before we found the, before we found what Martin Van Buren had on the walls. The National Park Service would work with the Scalamandre Wallpaper Company to reproduce Van Buren's historic wallpaper. Um, as for the wallpaper company itself, uh, Scalamandre was founded in 1929. They are known for the work they are known for historic restoration work and reproduction of wallpaper. Some of their highlights involve the various mansions found in Newport, Rhode Island. They worked on a massive Metropolitan Opera House renovation in the 1980s. They famously helped Jackie Kennedy put together, put together the White House restoration in 1961. 
They worked on George Washington's Mount Vernon, Andrew Jackson's Hermitage, and most importantly, Lindenwald. Um, I'm gonna focus, as I mentioned before, on the green room and the formal parlor. Those are two rooms where we had very good original samples in our collection, as well as photos and examples of later period wallpaper found in some of those rooms. Um, I'm also gonna spend a little bit of time talking about Martin Van Buren's main hall. That wallpaper was fully restored, um, was a multi-year project, but it's a showstopper in our house, so I'd be foolish to not include that in this presentation. In order to complete our wallpaper restoration project, a lot of work had to be done. Uh, first and foremost, we had to remove the wallpaper that we found from the house. After that, it need, you know, multiple tests were run to determine the age. So we would test the fiber to see what it was made out of. Um, we studied how the paper was made and manufactured because there's plenty of clues there because you could determine what kind of machine would have made it and that would help you date it. And obviously if it was not machine made wallpaper, we know it would be from very earlier, you know, throughout the history of making wallpaper. Everything we had was eventually photographed and added into our museum collection. And these are some examples that I'll be showing you throughout this presentation. We also use documentary evidence and scholarly research to fill in the gaps. Uh, we're very fortunate that there were letters that Martin Van Buren wrote to various friends and family documenting his purchase and need for wallpaper throughout the house. Um, sadly, Martin Van Buren's wife, Hannah, passed away in 1819. So he would work with female friends to find out what was trendy and fashionable and sort of steer him in the right direction for making his wallpaper choices. Um, there's also some reports that were used that the Park Service commissioned. Um, Kinderhook was always very proud of Lindenwald and there was a long time movement to make it a national historic site. In 1936, an association was formed with the sole purpose of trying to make Lindenwald become a part of the National Park Service. To help with that goal, a commission, sorry, a, a study was commissioned in 1936. A National Park Service historian came to the house took photos, interviewed the owners, and documented the furnishings that were in it. Uh, this turned out to be very helpful later on down the line because some of the wallpaper and objects identified were rediscovered in the 1970s, and then we were able to cross-reference that with the report from the 30s and find out that we were on the right track, and that was, in fact, Martin Van Buren's wallpaper. So I'm gonna start with the green room. This is a photo from 1949. This was, this was when the DeProst family owned Lindenwald. Uh, they owned the house for 40 My, years. Mike, yes. we're not seeing your photo. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's better. Thanks. Okay, yeah, could you, could you see it now? Yes. Okay, um, sorry about that. Um, so this was so this was taken from the Prost ownership of Lindenwald. Um, so you could actually see the 1840 wallpaper on the walls of the green room. Um, so in the in the report for the 1930s, this wallpaper was documented as being a star patterned wallpaper. Um, so that checks out once it was actually dated. Uh, a couple of fun things about this photo is that some of the objects actually found their way into the museum collection. So that you're actually looking at Martin Van Buren's desk, as well as his chair and hat box. Also on the floor is the original carpet for the green room as well. Um, this wallpaper stayed on, on the walls the longest before being removed or actually papered over. Um, this wallpaper, stayed on the walls until around 1960. 
Other rooms along the wall, the original wallpaper was removed or covered up much earlier. Uh, in this photo, this is a this is a close-up photo of the original 1840 wallpaper that was found behind one of the mirrors in the room. As I mentioned, you see the star shaped uh, in the Victorian era. Um, star patterns, geometric shapes, floral patterns, stripes, those are all very popular. So this style fits in with what would have been a fashionable trend you can have on the walls. Uh, and the next photo, what you're looking at is an example of the 1980s wallpaper sample from the Scalamandre company. So we worked closely with them to make sure that everything was reproduced by the right color and the right shade. Gradually see some color samples underneath the wallpaper in the photograph. Next up, what you're looking at is the approved, completed reproduction wallpaper for the room. As well as a side-by-side -side comparison of the original wallpaper with the reproduction. And you can see it's pretty much an identical, an, an identical image. Next up, what you're looking at is one of the fireboards. Uh, the fireboards played a key role in figuring out the border of the rooms of the house. It turns out that the border of the fireboards was the exact same as the border for the rest of the wallpaper. Um, these fireboards were produced by the Zubair company, which is the same company that made the wallpaper for the main hall. Um, so these are actually wallpapered fireboards. What is fun about this photo is our fireboards were actually digitally scanned and reproduced. Um, we wanted to help preserve the original wallpaper because they're very rare fireboards. So they are now safely in storage and it's pretty much a near identical reproduction. So in the future, if we need to have these, if anything happens to them, we could just have it reproduced and there's no longer a concern about the original fireboards. In this photograph, you could see an example of the 1840 border for the fireboard slash wallpaper border for the rest of the room. And this photo here is the, this is the expanded cleaned up reproduction border uh, found on the fireboard. Um, the photo, the original photo is a smaller sample. There, there were larger samples in our collection, but those photographs were not the best quality to include here. So in case anyone was wondering how the rest of the panel was determined, there are larger full strips of it that were consulted. And here's a comparison as well between the original sample and the reproduced board. This is an example of how the green room currently looks in Linden Wall today. I mentioned the pier mirror so you could see it up against the back wall. Um, fortunately for us, no one felt like removing the mirror to check for what was behind it. They would just wallpaper the other walls. So everything was pretty much untouched when we took it off in the early 80s to restore the house. And I wanna end in this room, this is, this is the close up of the border and the star pattern wallpaper as it is on the walls today. Um, next, we're gonna move on to the formal parlor. Um, I chose this room because this is an example of there was, you know, there was about four or five layers of wallpaper also in this room that had to be removed and sorted through before we found what was originally on the walls. So what you're looking at here is a circa 1890 bit of wallpaper found on the east wall of the room. It's another floral pattern um, consistent with a popular theme. It looks kind of busy to me, but you know, I mean, they they thought it was great. So they went a bit wild, as you'll see in a future photo. Here's the parlor how it looked in 1934. 
uh, you can see the whole wall wallpapered with the previous sample. So that's how it looks in its entirety. What I like about this photo, it just also has some fun objects that are now currently in our collection. The armchairs were, are, were Martin Van Buren's original chairs. And what's on the ground that looks like a magazine rack is actually the president's oyster cooker. Here's another photo from about seven years later that shows more of the Florida wallpaper. You see a match of the curtains as well in the room. This photo here is from when the, this was from the last owner of the house, a man named Ken Campbell. Uh, he owned the house from the late 50s until 1974. It's a little hard to tell in this photo, but that's actually wallpaper on that wall. Um, around 1960 is when he papered over most of the other wallpaper in the rooms throughout the house. Um, what I like about this photo is if you look through the doors, the, the next room, that was, that was Martin Van Buren's informal dining room, but that was another clue to how the rooms would have looked because in the collection of letters in our collection between Martin Van Buren and Harriet Butler, who was the wife of one of Martin Van Buren's good friends, he mentioned how there were two adjoining rooms that he wanted the wallpaper to be consistent and the pattern to be in both of them. So the descriptions that were found in those rooms matched his informal dining room and the parlor. And we found matching samples in both of those rooms that we then used to just carry it out for the restoration. Here's another close up of some of the 1890 wallpaper. You can mention that, you know, that it, that it is fully machine produced with the metallic paint on it. It looks very shiny, both in the photograph and in person. This wallpaper, we actually have a full roll from 1890, just in storage in our collection. There, we, we have some later border samples. Um, you know, nature scenes were also popular. Lots of, you know, lots of flowers, lots of birds. Some of that carries through here. This is a better look at some of the flowers that would have been on that border. Finally, after going through all the later wallpaper and doing more investigating, we were able to find the actual 1840 wallpaper for this room. Um, it's a little hard to make out here, but there are flowers on it, as well as columns and geometric shapes. You could get a much better look at how of the of the flowers and the patterns in the reproduced sample from the Scalamandre Wallpaper Company. And here is the completed actual roll of wallpaper that was used to go on the walls. And here is a, here is a comparison once again between the original wallpaper found behind the mirror and the 1985 reproduced wallpaper. I also want to talk about this fireboard. Um, this fireboard had a lot more later period wallpaper on it. So that wallpaper had to be removed to help conserve the wallpaper. So there's a look at the border that would have been on the fireboard as well as the trim for the rest of the room. Here's a close up look of the actual wallpaper from the fireboard, a better look at the, at the birds and all the flowers from the pattern. This is the close up of the 1840 border from the fireboard. And here you're looking at the fully reproduced border sample as well as a comparison between the 1840 bit of wallpaper and the modern reproduction. Um, for this room, I was able to find restoration photos from the 1980s. Um, the park fully opened for tours in 1987. So the goal was to have the wallpaper reproduced and on the walls for that date, which they did meet. So this photo is from around 1984, 85. 
you could see that all of the wallpaper has been removed. I've mentioned the, the pier mirror, you can see that in the corner. And in the next photo, you see the recently reproduced wallpaper back on the walls. It's a little dark in the photo, but as I said before, if you look in the next room, you'll see the same wallpaper because the pattern did go throughout and was featured in both of the rooms. And here's your before and after. You see what a difference the room actually looks fully restored with the proper period wallpaper on the walls. Here we are with the parlor from today, as well as another close up of the completed work. Um, I mentioned before, I wanna talk about how the main hall was actually restored. Um, this was the one room where the wallpaper stayed on the walls and no one touched it from when it was installed in 1841 until 1974. This, this, this was a depression era photo of the wallpaper. It's entitled The Landscape of the Hunt. It's depicting a hunting scene in the Alsace-Lorraine region of France. Um, it was made by the Zubert Company. After the company themselves, they were founded in 1802. Um, scenic wallpaper had its, had its peak from about 1800 to 1875. The Zuber Company produced 25 different landscaping scenes from 1804 to 1860. Um, they actually developed techniques to, you know, to, to make scenic wallpaper possible. They created special paints and pigments to, to be able to design these breathtaking scenes. Um, they also found out a way, you know, they they, they produced continuous printed sheets of wallpaper. Prior to that, it was very time consuming because it was individually glued pieces of wallpaper and they made one large paper on a roll. Uh, this particular scene here it is entitled The Landscape of the Hunt. It's four different hunting scenes. It comprises 32 strips of wallpaper. There's over 140 different colors and 1,253 wooden blocks. Um, the 32 panels is for just the standard size. The main hall itself was larger, so it actually required 45 panels to complete it. Um, as I mentioned before, Van Buren installed it in 1841. He actually covered up wallpaper stencils in the room. Um, at that point in time, they were there for about 50 years, but that's not what he wanted, so he wallpapered right over them. Uh, it was it was a very labor intensive process to restore the wallpaper because it had over 100 years worth of damage. So the Park Service had to figure out exactly what to do to make this possible. So in 1978, they actually had a symposium with multiple conservators, museums, and organizations. Each one presented different treatment plans and options so they could try and determine a proper course of action. The wallpaper had to be removed from the walls, it needed new backing, it had to be, pieces of it had to be stitched together, they had to do painting to flush out the original pattern. Um, it was, the whole project was undertaken by James and Patricia Ham. They were a conservator team. What they did was they began work on the house, sorry, they began work on the wallpaper in 1981. So they removed all the panels, uh, the wallpaper was put back on in 1986. Um, it could not be saw, it could not be saved on the north and the south wall. So the Park Service had to reacquire Zubair wallpaper to complete the restoration. So we had to find the company that still that still carried and sold it. The company that we worked with had reproduced wallpaper from the 1950s. So it was a little lesser quality and it was a lot brighter, but it was, but it was used to complete the look of the room. Since the wallpaper was put on the wall in 1986, it has periodically been reworked and, and treated. Um, 2006, it had a treatment review for suggested treatments. And in 2018, more in-painting was done to, to restore some paint loss on the, on the wallpaper itself. 
here's a photo for 1961. This gives you a good look at the North Wall, and you can see how the wallpaper was unable to be salvaged. What what the bottom would be like a hand railing, which you could by no means see at all in that photo. And you can make out nothing of what would have been above it. Um, in this photo, what's nice is that's actually the original 1797 Dutch door, as well as the Dutch, as well as the original door knocker. So this is a close-up of the reproduced banister. Um, with the wallpaper itself, the banister scene is actually separate from the hunting scene. So that was not made by the Zubair company. So we could not buy that again. We had, we had, we had to have it reproduced. So the Scott Mandre company helped us out with that as well. So this is a look at the main hall once everything had been completed. So on the east and west wall, you see the conserved 1841 wallpaper. And on the north wall, you see the reinstalled wallpaper from the 1950s. It looks a bit different, but I like it because when Van Buren installed the wallpaper, it would have been much more vibrant. So the north, the north wall is a good look at how it would have been. Uh, the Zubert Company was actually known for their ombre skies. So you, you, you get the effect of, you know, of, of the sun throughout the day by looking at it on the reproduced wall. Uh, here's a close-up. Uh, this is a combination of the old wallpaper and the new wallpaper. So on the left, you see the 1841 wallpaper and how it perfectly matches with the reproduced wallpaper from the 1950s. You can see how the seams are lined up and you see it could transition from old to new. Uh, this reminds me of something kind of like the Wizard of Oz, like from Dorothy going from black and white to technicolor. And just, it's like a night and day difference looking at it. Um, as I mentioned before, the wallpaper had to be restored. Um, one of the one of the most one of the, the biggest technique they had to do was a lot of in painting. So as you see here, it's very hard to tell what you're actually looking at. So if you guys want to just take a minute and try and take a guess as to what you're looking at, and then I will show you the completed work in the next slide. While you're waiting for people's answers, Mike, uh, there's a question on what was the pigment vehicle for this wallpaper? Was it oil, temp tempera, or what, what was it? It, it, I, it I, I, believe, I believe it was oil. And so here is the here's the image once it had been fully painted back in and restored. Um, basically, with the amount of work that they had to do, like even today, sometimes people ask us if they're if they're looking at a painting on the wall, and of course they are not. But you know that's that's what it took to get it back to its former glory. And of course, here's, you, you, you can see the before and after. Um, as I said, it was a, was a multi-year process. Um, there were even some parts of the wallpaper where they took original pieces that have been broken up and they actually pieced them back together like a jigsaw puzzle before giving them everything a brand new lining and putting it back on the walls. Um, I mentioned before that the that the that the first floor was going to be the main focus of the house, but all the other rooms had wallpaper, and we just have so much stuff in our collection that it's just fun to see how other what other people wanted to do when they owned the house. So this next group is primarily from the upstairs of the house. So this is from 1930. Uh, you know, it's a fun pattern from one of the upstairs bedrooms. This is a 
different 1930 star pattern. Kind of reminds me of what's downstairs, but of course it's a it's a different color scheme. But just another fun thing that that we happen to have. This is more flowers from a bedroom from 1950. It's a small little piece, but it's a good image and it's a little more modern. Uh, this next one, so this is this is Anglo Japanese wallpaper from around 1880. Um, as I said before, I mean, you know, there was a bit, there was a big, there's a big craze for for Far Eastern based products for both Chinese and Japanese. Um, so this is this is this is a Japanese inspired print. This was found. There's a there's a hallway upstairs. It's a family hallway outside of the family bedrooms. But what's nice about this photo itself is more about what they found on the back of it. So you could see, you could see the imprint of the 1840 wallpaper that they papered over. So it's a geometric diamond-shaped print. Which we had reproduced with every, you know, along with the other wallpaper in the mid 1980s, as well as how this looks currently on the walls today. So, if anyone has has any more questions about the wallpaper, then I'm 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 happy to answer them. Feel free to put your questions in either the chat or the Q&A and I will read them out to Mike. So one person asked, if you are restoring the wallpaper, you must know what medium was used to produce the wallpaper or is this just about the wallpaper designs? I mean, we, so we, we, we have all that information like we we have all of the we have all the treatments that are done and we have all the chemicals that were used um that was that was not that was not my focus um because i mean because i'm you know i'm i'm not a conservator that's not that's not my background so i was i was i was more focused on on the accuracy of what we have in the house and how you could how you could see that you know that's you know that that Martin Van Buren would recognize it because of what we had and what we had reproduced. Another person asked um, about how toxic any of the wallpaper or glue was. I mean, there was so there was, I mean, there was there was there was not problems with. I mean, with with that wallpaper, I mean, there. I mean, there are there. Obviously, there were examples of, you know, arsenic was used in certain types of wallpaper, but that is not in anything that was found in our collection. I don't see any more questions right now, but oh, I guess, yes, there is one just, um, were the servants quarters also wallpapered? So the, the, the servants dining room was a wallpapered area. Um, and that, I mean, it was not, you know, it was not the most common for servant areas to be wallpapered, but in the case of Van Buren, that was done for his servants. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't include those samples in the presentation, but we do have samples of the original servants dining room wallpaper as well. And another person has asked, what was the biggest discovery found at Lindenwald? Um, you mean you mean in ter like in, in in terms of in terms of the in, in terms of the wallpaper? Not sure, Matthew. Do you want to clarify? Hmm. 
most exciting from wallpaper? <laughs> I mean, I would, I, I mean, I, I would say it, it's, it was just the fact that, that the, that the original main hall wallpaper was primarily intact in the house. Um, cause the, the, cause the landscape of the hunt, there's only about, there's only about maybe two or three cases of historic house museums that actually have like a first executed print of the wallpaper. Um, and, and of course we're one of them. So it's, it's, it's a very rare wallpaper uh, panoramic scene to still have on the walls. So the fact that they left it there was remarkable. Yeah, so somebody asked related, does a history like this exist for the wallpaper in other historic homes, such as the White House? Uh, yes. Um, and, you know, and, and of course there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's an overlap with some of the companies that I've mentioned, of course, you know, the, you know, there's, there's Zubair paper in the White House as well. Um, but yeah, but I mean, you know, most, most sites will, will have all the documentation, um, about, about what was there, uh, especially with the White House. <laughs> And, and other and other presidential sites as well. Okay. We'll wait just a minute or two longer to see if anybody else has a question. Getting some thank yous for your very interesting presentation. Okay, well, if there's no more questions, I think we can wrap it up. Uh, we will. We have recorded this, so we will be posting it on um, the Columbia County Libraries Association website, and hopefully it'll be up there you know, by the end of the week. Um, I do have a couple more questions that just came in. Um, one is, years ago, a friend who worked on restored wallpaper at the White House did a talk for a Cub Scout troop. So I guess, yes, there is this similar information for the White House. How many blocks were used by Zubair to create the hunt scene wallpaper? So it was, it was, it was, was over, was over 1400. Um, I, I forgot to mention that one of the, one of the cool things about the Zubair wallpaper is, so, I mean, like you could, you could still buy these patterns and the majority of their wallpaper is still made with the original wood blocks from the 1800s. Um, so, you know, they, they use the same techniques. I mean, their, their blocks were actually classified as like a national treasure in France. Um, if you go to their website, you could actually see videos of them reproducing, reproducing the wallpaper. Okay, well, a number of people are saying they need to get back and visit Lindenwald again. So now they'll they can visit it with new appreciation for the wallpaper. Um, yeah, so come come see us in the spring and summer. Okay, well, thank you, Mike. And um, as I said, you know, it has recorded, so you can have another look at this. The slides will be up, and the the presentation will be up um, at ColumbiaCountyLibraries.org by the end of the week. So thank you everybody for coming. Good night.